roll. Super Here ready. Excited for the day. It's going to be an amazing day. Back to the We need more film. We have it too. Best show ever in Good evening to you, my dear friends. And mine as well. I am so happy to see you out there. Not quite as happy as I am. <laughs> no, I'm happier, I, maybe. I'm happier. I, I might be the happier one. In the comments, you should see who's happier because my name is Aaron. My name is Dan. And together we are Aaron, Aaron and, and Dan. Dan. And this is Aaron and Dan, but, but it's, it's live. live. It's Aaron and Dan, but it's live. You it get it. Tuesday you right now. It. Tuesday, April 16th at 8.01 p.m. That is how live it is. So yes. if you're watching this hours later, it's not live anymore. You can still comment, but all that's going to happen is while we're deep in the tank, working in the other room, <laughs> we're going to get a little ding if someone's checking in and they're like, soda pop. I can't tell you how many times that happens. We'll finish our live show and then they'll be like, hey, what are you doing? And they'll be answering the trivia questions and they'll be telling them what anyway. Which is great. I mean, we don't care when the engagement happens exactly. so long as it happens. But if you are out there right now, thank you for being here. We see a lot of the regulars and some new voices and faces. You can follow us here, here, and here. And uh, welcome to the show. Yes, we're going to have so much fun tonight. We have a great action-packed show for you. We've got two guests coming up. We have one guest by the name of David Lane, who is going to be talking to Dan about his music delve for the week. Mm, mm -hmm. Into Ludwig von Beethoven, mm -hmm. the Eddie, vampire. Uh, he was. Wait, he was actually a vampire. Oh, I'm yeah. going to learn so much today. Oh, yeah. David can tell you all about that. <laughs> and then we also have Joanna Jarvis, who is an actress and director who is joining us from Florida today. It's going to be epic, but more epic, even more epic than those two guests are all of you. Go ahead and let us know what you're drinking out there because it is time to share a drink with us. Let me tell you what. At the end of the day, when nothing is left, there will be water. Well, yes. actually, that's not true, and it might be too soon because I think the water wars have begun. But for now, oh, we no. have water <laughs> and in these cups is exactly that. The reason that I'm toasting with water tonight is because it's really, really important for me to hydrate myself. Just her. <laughs> yeah, well, I mean, I'll hydrate you if you need me to. Wait. You should got to pay for that. <laughs> oh, yeah. I yeah. don't know what I meant. I know what she meant. I said that and the viewership doubled. <laughs> Aaron will hydrate anybody if the price is right. Let me tell I you. I will. I want people to stay hydrated. Yeah. It's important. Aaron, uh, most people are 60% water. Aaron just got back to the doctor and she told us she's only 22% water. Very dry. So I have made a commitment to myself to drink 100 ounces of water every day. Darn tootin'. You're doing it too, Carrie? Ooh, mom's drinking coffee. See, mom, I would be drinking coffee, but this is only my, um, like, 10th or uh, uh, 70th ounce of okay. water. Well, question. If you drink coffee, does that count? If you drink eight ounces of coffee, does that count as water? Yeah, I've been counting it a little bit. I've been counting coffee, tea, a little and bit. water. What well, does that mean? Okay, meaning I, I count it a little bit less than water. If I drink water, it's like, if I drink 20 ounces of water, I'm like 20 ounces of water. But if I drink 20 ounces of coffee, I count it as 15. Oh, okay. Well, hey, that's pretty good then. Did anybody else out there grow up with the thought that when you drink coffee, it dehydrates you? Well, apparently, I mean, it does, but it's way overblown. It's completely overblown. Studies have shown that it, it's almost like an irrelevant amount. I think it affects the, the what is it? What is the, by like the Krebs cycle, the same thing that alcohol shuts off, but oh, way less than alcohol. But okay. it, it's kind of like a, if you drink because the water in the coffee is still hydrating, obviously. Yeah, but I think it, the the dehydrating properties of caffeine have been super overblown over the last years. Well, exactly right, Bruce. <laughs> As you are letting us know what you are drinking out there, we have a special toast coming at you. And this is from a few special friends that I get to spend almost every week with at Salem Montessori School. They have prepared a toast for you, and here they come. And we are We are at Salem Montessori School. We love acting. We love being our characters. We have learned it's, fo it's important to focus every time. And we have a toast for all of you. I wish you good happiness. I wish you good health for your family. I wish you a good night. I hope you stay healthy. We hope this brings joy to you. To Winnie the Pooh and to all of the world. Bring peace to the world. Cheers! Cheers, in cheers everybody y'all appreciate that from the from the mouth of babes 
to the ears of the nearly dead. <laughs> Clink! Cheers, cheers. Mm. Ah, I love water. <laughs> oh, I put a lot of lemon in it. Do you not like it? You don't it? say. No, I do. I like it. <laughs> I like it because it's like lemonade without any sugar. It's like squeezing a piece of citrus directly into my gullet. I appreciate that, Aaron. Thank you. <laughs> Susan, I'm glad you recognize some of those kids. They've been in spring theater a long time. I have a really awesome opportunity because I get to do Winnie the Pooh with them right now. And uh, it's, been, it's been pretty fun. Yes. Here's the thing about Winnie the Pooh. Precedes Disney, right? The storytelling precedes Disney. However, did you know that the characters of Tigger cannot be represented without, uh, without Disney's consent? Nor can Pooh Bear... If he's wearing a red shirt. Yes. So literally, um, all of our kids, we, they were very excited about doing Winnie the Pooh, but we couldn't have a Tigger in the show, which is sad because all of them are kind of like Winnie the Pooh. Yes. You know, you have a couple <laughs> of a piglet and a, and a rabbit. Hi, piglet and rabbit. <laughs> piglet number two. It's not a couple of piglets. We, <laughs> we're double. Cheers from a couple of piglets. <laughs> piglet number two is the bomb. I got to see one rehearsal for that. And let me tell you, it's it's turning out to be a, an adorable. It's the cutest thing I've ever seen An adorable, chaotic. <laughs> it is chaos. Musical event of neutrons smashing into one another and separating. <laughs> Here's the reason that it's a little bit chaotic. I love these children with my whole heart and soul. But they come to me at 3 p.m. after they've been in school since 9 a.m. Yeah. And they're between the ages of 5 and 11. And they are cuckoo bananas, as my good friend Courtney would say. But I love them so much. Is that what and Courtney would say? Yeah. Cuckoo bananas is always her thing. I miss Courtney. Yo, why are we dressed like this? Oh. Why? Why? Because today is National Pajama Day. And we haven't put real clothes on since March of 2020. That's not true. You've oh. seen our show. Huh. It, you, you can't fool them. Look, yuck, these yuck, are yuck, yuck. all of the people, not all of the people, but just some of my favorite pictures of people who went to work in their pajamas today. Is that <laughs> oh. just today? Hey, Owen and Christopher Robin. Nice to see y'all. It was. These are all pictures from today of Cute. people enjoying National Pajama Day. Wow. Isn't that great? Yeah. You know what? I actually should have worn these out and about today. You could have. I should have worn them at the gym. It was leg day. Can you imagine what this onesie would have been like if I had had the butt flap open and was I, doing deep squats? That would be pretty funny. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you guys, you know what's exciting about this day? Mm. Pajamas, according to my teenagers, because we have a um, youth theater company, as many of you know, and we have a lot of programs that we work with teens, and it's back in. Wearing pajamas oh, yeah. during the day is back in. In fact, we went to schools and did some workshops during the week, and... Kids are wearing pajamas all over the We've place. We've been seeing that at spring rehearsals for a couple summers now. People wear the, the flannel pants. I've even seen teachers doing it, which, frankly, I'm not going to be one to disparage that because that sounds like a dream. When I was in <laughs> high school, we couldn't even wear hats. Wait, you couldn't? No, we what? couldn't wear hats in Wait, junior high. Wait, are you high. actually being serious? I'm you serious. couldn't wear hats? Couldn't, you weren't allowed to wear hats. You weren't allowed to chew gum. Um, and then, actually, that was junior junior high. We weren't allowed to wear hats. Elementary huh. school, we weren't allowed to wear hats. And then we got to high school, and I think it turned over, and they were like, you can wear hats. And we were like, oh, <laughs> yes! No, I, will. I can express myself! It's so funny. I feel like hats are a strange thing. Is it because of the logos on the hats? Is that why? I was. I didn't ask. I was 15, and I was obsessed with Pokemon, so didn't have time for queries i am now in my 30s and i am also obsessed with Pokemon, freshly obsessed which makes me so cool with the five-year-olds i'm not gonna lie yeah and not, cool. and not just on uh national pajama day either <laughs> so I'm, true yeah. when walmart used to be open 24 7 yeah it was a lot a lot bigger when, when walmart was open 24 7 i would see the strangest things because i would always go in at three in the morning because i, I was it. like whoa i do too i miss it so much I miss um, a lot of the 24-7 COVID, things. of all the things COVID took from us, 24-hour uh, retail <laughs> is surely I, the most tragic. I think there was more, Dan. I, don't, I, I, I think there was more. I can't think of what that would be. <laughs> hey, guys, if what? you're watching this show right now and you're in the vicinity of Winston-Salem, I want to invite you to come <gasps> to every brilliant oh, thing. And not every brilliant thing, no. but specifically this event. <laughs> yes. Every brilliant it thing. It is a show that is taking place at Spring Theater. It is going to happen next month. And it is a one-man show. We just started rehearsing it yesterday. The one man in it is our very own Dan Beckman. Yes. Oh, yeah. yeah. And he produced this show. Well, he um, toured this show back in Kearney, Nebraska for a bunch of high school students. Performed this show, which is, by the way, meant for like an intimate audience in the round that everyone can and see. And adults, each other. I would and say. And adults. It's, it's meant for adults. But we toured it to kids in high schools and junior highs. I performed this show in an auditorium 
uh, a gymnasium with people on both sides. It was over a thousand a people. A thousand kids. <laughs> at one time. And it went better than I thought it would. It was awesome. I mean, if you're like me, that sentiment alone, that statement made your skin crawl. You're genuinely going to love this show so much. So so please come out to everybody. Like, if, you, um, if you haven't seen the show, you're going to love it. There's something for everyone. Yeah, the quick pitch is it's a one-person show and it deals with issues of mental health and how the... Um, the mental uh, divergence, the neurodivergence of parents ends up affecting kids. And that while we may not be able to do things that change people's outlook, we can do things that end up changing the way that we see the world. It's a beautiful show. It's funny. It's heart wrenching. It's it's sad. It's happy. It's everything. And in the show, this boy who starts out at seven years old starts creating a list of everything brilliant about the world. He starts creating everything that he thinks is awesome, like ice cream. What are some brilliant things out there? Because we are gonna need extra brilliant things. Um, there are This list gets really, really long, and we would love to have all of you send us brilliant things that we can feature in the show. And when we say brilliant things, it's a British show. So oh, it's yes. like brilliant things, like, oh, that's brilliant. It's, not, it's great, wonderful is the sentiment there. <laughs> exactly. Um, so yeah, definitely come check that out. That's going to be in the first weekend of May. Yes, so excited about it. It's going to be unbelievably awesome. Guess what I did this weekend? What did you do? I went to Richmond, Virginia. Yes, you did. And um, my best friend and I, from when we were two years old, hung out all weekend. We did so many things. But one of the things we did was a writer's workshop. And has anybody out there ever taken uh, just a, it was like a writing afternoon with writing prompts. Has everyone out there ever taken a whole lot of meth at once? Wait, what? <laughs> is that a writing prompt? Sure. <laughs> it was so fun because we got a writing prompt and then we wrote for 20 minutes on this thing and it just kind of flowed out and yeah. it was awesome. Yeah, free writing is, I was jealous of that. I wanted to be at that. I was at uh, in Northern Minnesota at a 50 year reunion of my college. Now, Woo! not of my class. I mean, <laughs> if please. that was true, you would be even more preserved than you if, are. If that was true, I'd want some of my own uh, skincare routine. <laughs> Uh, 50 years since the Performing Arts Center at my school opened, and so there were classes there, people who graduated last year, all the way back to people who graduated in 1974. Isn't that it was crazy? Awesome. Got to mm. see a bunch of old friends and hang out at the lake and find out that since I've been living in Minnesota, I'm a huge wuss when it comes to the cold because I was 50, oh. 50 degrees. Did I tell you this? No. It was like 50 degrees and sunny, and it was a, like a nice day in Duluth, but we were down on Lake Superior and the wind was blowing off the lake, and I had like my hood up and was like, <laughs> it's brisk. But everyone else was and like wrapping around in shorts, and I was like, oh, I'm a southerner That's now. so funny. Oh my gosh, something that I didn't know. Yeah. Guys, we should spend time apart more often. We should. <laughs> I, I've been saying that for six years. Mm hmm. Oh, that's cool. I'm going to have to check that out, Jennifer. You guys, it is time for the Dan Beckman Photography Photo of the Week. Week, 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 For those of you who don't know, Dan Beckman right here is a award winning photographer. Two, two awards. Hey, yes, but that's more awards than, than I one. won. That's more than one. It is more than one. And uh, Dan, this is the Dan Beckman Photography Photo of the Week. Tell us about it. Oh, this was taken during the 50 States Tour. This mm. was uh, this is Devil's Tower. One of them, I think, one of the most iconic natural monuments in the uh, in the United States. One I'd always wanted to see. And we got to see it in, what, in northwest eastern Wyoming because that's where it is. Hard to move that thing around. <laughs> it is. Uh, and it was a great day. With My parents came to meet us in South Dakota. And we uh, we drove in a in a car, believe it or not, and and it was like golden hour. And you're winding through these pine forests, and there were these prairie dog oh, little camps literal all over prairie dogs that just came boop, popping out. Boop, hello, hello. Yeah, they were so cute. And then oh. uh, caught 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 it right at sunset. Got to watch the sunset at Devil's Tower. Mm. Beautiful, beautiful. Highly recommended. If you're in Wyoming, I almost guarantee you, it is the thing to do. Yeah. Because my experience with Wyoming is that there isn't anything else <laughs> and if you are in winston-salem this is the thing to do if mm. you like that photo and 49 more like it dan beckman 50. 40 oh that's right because there's 51 photos in this book so this saturday april 20th at two o'clock we are doing a book signing event at Book Ferret in Winston-Salem, which I have not personally been to, but I have heard incredible things about Book Ferret. I'm so psyched. So come out and support this local bookstore, this local author, and you can see all 50 of Dan's books. You could also meet him. I mean, you could meet him right now, but he's going to be talking in depth about um, the process of making the book. It's going to be awesome. Here's the thing, guys. If you have any care in the world for me, 
just imagine me sitting at this book signing, an author no one knows or care about, <laughs> with absolutely nobody there to have a book signed for an hour, just twiddling my thumbs, feeling embarrassed. And just help me avoid that. <laughs> yeah. Help me avoid. That's all I ask. I do have a few costumes in the car, so if nobody shows up, I'm planning on coming in. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, Shani, I love Maybe this we can get a book. Cup. Will you sign it for me? <laughs> and then I'll be like, hey, man, that book's awesome. No Let's one will suspect it. Sign it for and me. Pick- there'll be two of you in a trench coat <laughs> yes um i'm gonna have to actually i'm gonna get one of my winnie the pooh kids and i'm gonna put them on my shoulders and i'm gonna button my trench coat up and he's gonna talk like in the little rascals i love that movie yeah you yeah. guys not only have we been doing a lot this year theatrically but i have been learning this is the best what have you been learning about so i decided that since this is a big year for baby bean aaron i am gonna learn a new thing every single day 365 days, 365 new bits of knowledge, starting with what I learned this week on April 9th. This is so freaking cool, Dan. Did you know this? What? That the packaging problems of round fruit are solved by making them square. In Korea, they literally have plastic molds that they grow their fruit in, so it stacks in a square. Oh, you know what, though? Um, Do you know that they also do that with cats? We... I don't understand. If you Google, <laughs> if you Google bonsai cats, they do this. Just, Are you actually having a serious moment right now? I don't want to pee on your apple parade, but you look, just, just did. Just Google bonsai cats. They uh, do the same thing with cats. Uh, I'm I'm in so much shock. I got to move yeah, on. And it's not for packaging reasons. Oh my god! Because you don't package a cat. I, I'm shocked. Next, I, I think you're lying. I'm not. On April 10th, I learned that <laughs> Alexander Fleming first called penicillin mold juice after he discovered <laughs> that the juice produced by a mold killing wide range of bacteria Fleming later changed it to penicillin I'm super glad he did Ladies and gentlemen mold juice 1 2 3 4 <laughs> You are The music stopped did I break something You're on fire Sorry <laughs> On April 11th I learned that your brain alone burns 400 to 500 calories per day. Oh, that makes sense. That makes me so happy because I am on a weight loss journey and <laughs> I'm just going to think more. No, I don't. <laughs> <laughs> mm, what are you doing, Aaron? I'm losing weight. I think mm. weight loss journey aside, we could all afford to think a little more. <laughs> Next. On April 12th, I learned how to install a window air conditioning unit. Wow. That's me and my best friend. We did it all by ourselves. And it was on the second floor. So first of all, we had to learn. We had one of those extendable giant ladders and we had to learn how to do that. There was this firefighter that lived next door and we were having so much trouble. He came out of his house and he was like, Excuse me, ladies. Can I help you? (laughs) In my fantasy, he was shirtless, but he wasn't. Really? Um, Do you have a thing for firefighters? Well, doesn't every woman? I don't think so. If, if you are a, a, not, a straight not, woman out there. Not if you're an arsonist. Well, I, I bet you love them. You're like, ooh, come put my fire out, baby. No, why would you? <laughs> <laughs> I have a little bit of a thing for firefighters. That's why when you said you were going to be a don't firefighter. Touch I got me. No. Dan was I'm gonna, never letting you go to Richmond again. Dan was going to be a firefighter. Anyway, I Richmond is to... the sexy firefighter capital of the world. Next. <laughs> the next thing I learned, this is going to make you sad uh, if you don't already know this. Did I you bet, know? I bet I know what you're going to say. Most wasabi paste is not wasabi. Yes. Oh, my gosh. It's so expensive that most companies use horseradish yep. instead. Real wasabi is milder than you've been getting with your sushi. In fact, upon further research, I discovered that only 5 to 10% of restaurants outside of Japan actually serve wasabi. Boom. Yeah, well, wasabi. We've all been deceived our entire life. Wasabi's gross. I love spicy food, but wasabi hits different. I mean, it's not. Monica, is that a reference to the firefighter? Have you been having a little romp in the hay? Well, no, that's a reference to the thinking. It mm. might be. It might, it might not be. If you think about a firefighter, maybe you'll burn double the if calories. If you think about a firefighter. <laughs> I don't know why I went all summer. I'm a firefighter. Okay, guess what? Mm-hmm. On April 14th, I learned more about lobsters. Okay. So if you recall, I learned a long time ago, not, not a long time ago, but but previous this year, I learned that lobsters pee out of their faces. Right. Guess what I learned today? Tell me. Lobsters taste with their feet. The bristles inside their little pincers are equivalent to their human taste buds. And also, lobsters' teeth are in one of their three stomachs. 
lobsters have a very inconvenient physiology. Aren't they cool? Imagine you're walking along and then suddenly you walk on, I don't know, a, a, like a muddy puddle that some dog took a pee in. And, and they're like, like mm. and, no. then, and then they pee out their face and they're like, Yeah, that's oh. what sucks to be a lobster. Have you ever read David Foster Wallace's Consider the Lobster? You know what's really sad? What? Ellie, who is my best friend's two-year-old daughter, went to the grocery store and now she loves to go to the grocery store to see the pet lobsters and oh, someday yeah. she's going to wake up like I did and realize where those lobsters are going. Get her on the phone right now. This will be good content. No. We're going to tell her. <laughs> and then yesterday I learned, and this is something I learned a long time ago, I'm pretty sure, but did you know that one, one million Earths could fit into the sun? That's how big it is. There's, the circumference of Earth is about 25,000 miles. There's actually, if you take close-up photos of the sun, there's a there's a sunspot you can always see that has a name, and I can't remember what it's called. We saw it. And that eclipse. sun, I think, is that sunspot alone is like 15 times the size of Earth. Isn't that, that crazy? Yeah. You guys. You can see it with the naked eye, kids. I think try what happened was when I was a kid, I heard the word million. Don't try it out, kids. Do not try it out. Could Do not fun. look directly at the sun, could please. Could be fun. Could be fun. It's not fun. It could be. It could give you superpowers. <laughs> Maybe you'll get superpowers. Ooh. Don't you want to be a superhero? Jump off your roof, kids! You can fly! <laughs> this show is now rated PG-13. I think the hit, the espresso hit. <laughs> I'm so glad it did. I'm having fun. Yeah. But um, I am having fun. I am having fun. Do you know what time it is? What time is it? It is time to bring someone in to talk <gasps> about someone else. Oh, are we talking about Ludwig von Beethoven? Ludwig von Beethoven and David Lane. Yes. He is a musician, a music mm. director, and a composer in Winston-Salem, North Carolina. He has con Posed several short and independent films, including Spring Theaters, Lock films, in. Mm -hmm, and season screenings. Mm -hmm. David has composed over 100 concert works, which makes him a perfect person to discuss the late great mm -hmm. Beethoven today. Ladies and gentlemen, wait, he's dead. Beethoven is not David. David's oh, good. This is huge news. David's good. David's good. My Beethoven, life is... Beethoven's not good, but David's good. Ladies and gentlemen, put your hands together for the one, the only, David, Mr. David Lane. Lane. Hello. Hey guys, what's going on? I, I'm so I'm I'm really relieved to hear that you didn't want you didn't bring me on to talk about the movie with the dog because I've never seen it. <laughs> no, that's that's the one. Oh, that's uh, the one we're talking about it. <laughs> oh, okay. Well, <laughs> there's a movie with a dog, and uh, that's all I know. <laughs> well, that's about I think all that matters for that plot. David, I've that's seen good. that movie so many times. It is filled with it is filled with deep emotion that we probably could talk about for the next twenty minutes. Let's not. <laughs> David, how have I mean, you been? Oh, pretty good. Uh, hearing you read my bio tells me I need to change it. I've moved since then, and uh, probably a few other changes since since then as well. But still in the area, and uh, still doing most of those things you said. And hopefully, I know a little bit about Beethoven. I'm probably not the most knowledgeable person even watching this video, but I'll do my best to chat about him. Well, what I what I appreciate, David, is this music project has been very. Um, pretty easy across the board except for when i hit artists because i just basically go in order of a discography and i learned about that artist's life and and their career and how their their existence and their experiences bled into their music and for those of you who don't know dan's been doing this once a week yeah discography so a week deep dives um and the first challenge i ran into was miles davis just because you know jazz music it's you can't digest it all because those guys played on uh, put out a billion albums and a billion collaborations and things like that well, they weren't into editing in production and overdubbing and all that. It's just like press record. We're going to play, mm -hmm. and um, hey, we can do that about seven or eight times a year, and yep. our and record our live concerts. And under a, a ton of different labels. I mean, it wasn't always Miles Davis. It was you know he played with so many different artists of the time. And um, but anyway, we're not talking about Miles Davis. We're talking about Beethoven, which was equally d d challenging, if not more so, because there's no timeline you can really follow. Um, I mean, there is, but it's not as cut and dry. There's no like, and in 1979, he released Beethoven Goes to the Beach. <laughs> um, so, well, you know, one of the, the challenging thing about any classical composer, but someone as popular as Beethoven is like, if you decide you want to just explore Miles Davis, mm -hmm. you're, you're probably not going to listen to all of the cover bands that have done Miles Davis tunes. You're going mm -hmm. to find the Miles Davis albums, but... You know, we don't have any recordings of Beethoven, 
but what we have is probably 10,000 recordings or more, I mean, probably 50,000 recordings of each symphony. Right. And uh, you'll have people argue about which one is the best. And, and a lot of them can say why. And, you know, there's someone's favorite is someone else's least favorite. Mm -hmm. But if you hear multiple versions, you may find sometimes you end up liking a piece by a composer that you didn't before. And that's happened with me to me with other composers. Sure. Do you have a definitive version of the Beethoven symphonies you like to listen to or that you appreciate? Well, it's only for nostalgic reasons. I have, um, that's probably going to be glary, but this is the 1963 uh, Berlin Philharmonic with uh, Herbert von Karajan conducting. Ooh. And the only reason that it's so high on my list is we had that album. Oh yeah. Uh, I mean, we, we had the collection of symphonies was in my house and it was the, the recording where I first heard all of the symphonies. And so it was when I started buying my own CDs and, you know, adding to the classical collection, that, that was one of the first things I ever did. So I, I know that recording so well that sometimes it bothers me when I hear other versions, just I can see that because it's not the same. <laughs> yeah. That timpani's really coming in over the bassoon and I don't care for it. Right. That's so funny. <laughs> um, I ended up going with uh, the Vienna, Philharmonic, just because I thought keep it close to where Beethoven was. Now, which mm -hmm. do you know which conductor? I can tell you. I can tell you because I have the technology. Um, it was wow. uh, Simon Rattle. Mm. Okay, well, that's very good. Simon Rattle's more contemporary, so the sound quality is probably very pristine. Which is kind of a thing that I. I prioritize these days yeah dan's right. gone down a sound editing hole and so he genuinely loves to pick apart things we'll be sitting in the car and he'll be like oh my gosh the bass on this and i have no idea what's wrong <laughs> that's me that's oh him. my gosh the bass on this <laughs> you probably i mean it's not beethoven related i don't know how much he i don't even know how much he did of beethoven but pierre boulez the conductor hmm. uh someone i was in college when one of my teachers pointed out that he must have a really great sound editor because you mm. can hear absolutely everything in the orchestra. Like you can hear the triangle, you can hear wow. this, you know, everything just perfect. And I like nerding out on that stuff. When I was listening to some of the quintets and stuff, it was kind of funny because sometimes, you know, the microphones are just right up in the faces of the people playing. So you can hear the, the musicians like breathing between <laughs> yeah. viola strokes and stuff. That's cool. Oh, when um, the French horn gets spit in his valves and you know, yeah. it sounds like a pop, 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 pop. Yeah, yeah, you don't want that. <laughs> I played French horn as a kid, so that's a that's a very uh, comforting sound to me. Right. <laughs> David, if you had to pick a favorite symphony from Beethoven, what would it be and why? Uh, it's the third symphony, and oh. that's the Eroica. And uh, first of all, I think the second movement is the most perfect symphonic movement ever written. It's his funeral march. Hmm. And it goes through so many moods. It also is... Um, this is a general thing with Beethoven, but especially this movement is orchestrated so perfectly. Uh, when, whenever someone is interested in learning orchestration, uh, I, I got this advice from a from a former classmate, but I fully agree, and that is that uh, go to Beethoven first because mm -hmm. you can learn all of the basics in a very solid way, and it's if you can orchestrate like Beethoven. Uh, you can add to that and become more fancy, more flowery, but you get all of the, what's really solid with that. So that second movement is really good. The, the first movement is also incredible. And the third movement is just fun. And when I first heard the last movement, it, it took me a while to get into it. it, it, it for a while, it was a weak link. But as I hear it more and more, I hear something else I like and now I like it just as much as any and uh, you, you may know this already he wrote it uh, to Napoleon yes he wrote it about oh, Napoleon, wow. and um, he wrote it <laughs> before Napoleon became emperor. emperor and once that happened he changed the dedication to the memory of a good man or something like something yeah. to that effect wow yep um, that's so funny and, and uh, I, I did read that and I thought that was kind of funny and um, also, the third the third symphony, I believe, is kind of the the launching point of when his symphonies became in the heroic era. Is that right? Yes, yes. Um, I mean, it's certainly when the form started to change. I mean, there's a lot of things that happened at that time. Um, symphony number no. five, for example, the last movement is it, it's not the first, but it is one of it's probably the most famous piece 
to include a trombone to include to include the oh, trombones wow. and it's really? funny there's a meme out there about trombonists playing beethoven's fifth symphony first <laughs> first movement bored second movement bored third movement bored fourth movement they're straining to keep up <laughs> because so he just funny. brings them in that last time and then that's the launching point for having a full brass section in symphonies you know because when beethoven was writing his the symphonies it was in an era where um you know none of the brass instruments had valves on the instruments which limits what you can do oh. with the instruments so so that will that affects kind of the sound of the whole orchestra because you know they can't do a chromatic scale so they're limited to these to these certain notes huh i didn't know that so even though he was writing for instruments like the french horn and the trumpet they didn't exist in their modern form then correct uh, in fact if you play the symphony number no. three that's in the key v flat major well modern french horn has a horn in f and yeah. what that means is you get that part that was written for an e flat horn because basically the horn was in whatever key it was the symphony was at the time you have to transpose down a whole step or go find someone who's already done the work for you and you've got oh, part written out i had no idea um i didn't know about the french horn i mean about the trombones either what did catch me off guard is when i finally got to the ninth symphony and you had these vocalists come in Oh, um, there. Oh, yeah. There's a big. It's amazing. They're I know not, what you're talking about. Yeah, there's a big vocal section. I think it's actually called choral. That movement. I didn't get to listen to this with Dan this week because we were apart. But yeah. I used to listen to Beethoven all. The, I was such a nerdy kid. It was musical theater, or it was like my Beethoven Chopin Bach trilogy. Yeah, <laughs> that's a good that, trilogy. Yeah, yeah, it is quintessential. <laughs> some would say, but he that was the first symphony ever to include vocalists. That's pretty cool. Yeah. Also, I read that, and I, I could talk about this all day, but I know we have to. Um, I read that. Uh, before that time, symphonies tended to be kind of uh, light and simple and kind of upbeat. Yeah, pretty much. I mean, now Mozart gets credit for uh, symphony number 40, I think. 40? No. I thought they all went to nine and then they died. Isn't that the rule of the murders? <laughs> well, Beethoven started that trend, but you okay. know, oh, Haydn no. wrote 104 symphonies, Mozart wrote 41. Oh. But the 40th, it's it's one of the more famous ones. If you go listen to the the opening, you'll you'll recognize it. But it's in a minor key, and typically no one wrote as a minor key being the main thing. And then, you know, Beethoven, you know, started started making that a little bit more common. Even though mm -hmm. most of his symphonies are in a major key, it's actually uh, one of the things that's surprising about like the opening of the fifth symphony is that you don't hear the chord. You just hear a dun, 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 dun. Mm -hmm. And if you've never heard what's coming next, you could think that's the, the third going to the root of a major chord, but it's really the fifth to the third of a minor chord. And when that's finally fleshed out, it's like, oh, this is something different because it's there still, haven't been that many minor symphonies. It still sounds so like dramatic though. It's so epic. Yes. And you imagine things like, I mean, that's why Fantasia was born is to uh -huh. introduce kids to the visuals of classical music. Fantasia is a movement of the fourth symphony, isn't it? Uh, the, six, the sixth symphony. Yeah, it's right. the his pastoral symphony. And I think it's the, I can't remember. It's been so long since I've seen it. I forgot what, what the animation story is for that. But yeah, it's the, it's the sixth. And that's a pretty remarkable symphony because like he, he really spells out like a season of spring and there's a section with that's supposed to be a thunderstorm and it sounds like it and, mm -hmm. and it's kind of music you, you would hear in cartoons when there is a thunderstorm. Totally. Yeah. That's wild. Um, David, I literally could talk about this all day, but I want to hear just as a final thing, what in in is your elevator pitch for why Beethoven is and was as revered as he is? Mm. So Beethoven's my is my uh, personal choice when I talk about like who is the greatest composer. Now, wow. Wow. a lot of my colleagues, a lot of my friends will will say J.S. Bach should probably be higher up on the list because if you just kind of evaluate, you know, what is perceived as like first craft use of notes on a page and line going against line, you know, it's hard to argue that anybody that did it better than J.S. Bach. But why I don't think that he was the, the greatest composer is because the reaction to his music was to let's not do anything else like that. Uh, let's go in a completely different direction. But where Beethoven headed with Ninth Symphonies and his last string quartets especially 
every living composer wanted to be just like Beethoven and keep that going and try to do something else. And you, and you find that continues for basically 70 to 80 years after he died before, wow. before there was a profound movement to move away from it and to do other different things. So that's, that's, that's my enough. pitch. I think he, he, he perfected the symphony. It wasn't topped uh, for nearly 70 or 80 years. His string quartets were not topped until Bartok did it about a hundred years later. And everyone wanted to be like Beto. And it's just like, you know, why is Michael Jordan so revered in the NBA? Because be like Mike was a thing for so long. Yeah. yeah. Right. Plus Air Bud. Yes. Michael Jordan was not in Air Bud. Oh, man. But Beethoven the dog may have been. <laughs> <laughs> Brings it all true. full circle. <laughs> David, cool. thank you for being here. I, I, I want to pick your brain further off air maybe um sure. but uh, and also thank you for all the guidance that you gave me and in, in sending me on the right path to success for beethoven in the first place it was an overwhelming project <laughs> i hope <laughs> and, you enjoyed it and dan oh, what's what's your takeaway because this you did say this was like the hardest to digest like how do you like i feel like usually you you have a little bit of a different reaction so talk talk a little bit about how you're feeling well it's just that you know it's similar to miles davis except i feel like it's even more foreign to me where with miles davis i didn't understand there you go i do mean space yeah. jam thank you sarah yeah <laughs> um miles davis was tough because it was very entrenched in music theory and his importance was a lot but i would say that beethoven is is mostly just music theory and like i didn't i don't have a foundation of that so knowing why Bo beethoven was great compared to bach and 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 everybody else it was just different i was going in blind so i was really just trying to learn the the genre alongside of learning the artist that makes sense kind of interesting um and so i had a lot of help from david and i had a lot of help from hannah who was our former guest who's a musicologist um and i basically just kind of listen to the symphonies and then That's the quintessential cool. like um opuses outside of the symphonies and things like that so it was a great time i love it yeah i love oh, it great. i love you david it's so good to see you we great don't to see you too time together anymore i miss you yeah <laughs> all right see you later all right see you later <laughs> adios <laughs> i'm really excited that you did that because i feel like beethoven is such a different artist than anyone else you've done i mean definitely i mean from going from dolly parton to like tupac shakur there's a huge difference but but beethoven is so different standalone yeah yeah because it's not a, most almost all the music that we consider for things like this nowadays are 20th 20th and 21st century artists and right. it's like beethoven's from the 18th century so yeah. and and part of the 19th uh part of the 19th century as well it's, it's pretty fascinating yeah it's very cool and someday i won't be dumb <laughs> and I'll be able to appreciate it even more. You're not dumb now. And you know who else isn't? Who? Joanna Jarvis. I think that's true. It's true. You know, she is actually a senior in college studying performance. Um, Joanna has been working with Spring Theater uh, since 2008 on numerous productions, including Hairspray and Footloose and Puffs and Cinderella. I'm trying to get her pictures to come up now, but I can't figure out how. Yeah. Uh, oh, fantastic. <laughs> um, Joanna is an amazing woman. She was also in the Socially Distanced Films season screenings, and Joanna just directed her first show. It was a production of Thumbelina. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, please welcome the very talented Joanna Jarvis. What's popping, uh, Jay? Nothing much, you know. Just had to make a quick location change. <laughs> I see that. I, I miss the uh, the angularity of your previous space. I didn't think you'd appreciate the yelling stage manager in the background, so I <laughs> it makes I me hit the road. Like so true. If what is theater without a oh? I'm not the yelling stage manager Come in this on. relationship. Where are my married men at? <laughs> Joanna, it's so good to see you. You're backstage. What show are you working on right now? Um, right now, I am doing uh, makeup. I'm the makeup director for um, Cheaper by the Dozen. So That's a stage that's show? Oh, yeah. Um, yep. Wow. Uh, so how many are in the cast? Like 12? 15. Oh. <laughs> 15. All right. The Dozen Plus. <laughs> Makes cool. makeup very easy. I'll bet. So what kind of design do you have to do for that show? You make 40-year-old equity actors look like children? <laughs> I, actually, yes. I make 23-year-olds uh, look like children. Really? 
Mm -hmm. Well, that's pretty great. <laughs> a lot of blush. Cool. Blush. And where, where are you where are you doing the show? Um, on my college campus. It's for my class called Fundamentals of Dramatic Production. So. Nice. Mm -hmm. Excellent. I love that. And also, um, Dan, can can he look like a child if you put enough rouge on him? Yes. Why did you hesitate? <laughs> because because I really had to think about it, Dan. That's really savage. <laughs> He's so wearing sorry. a onesie right now yeah. with a butt flap, which have... he won't show you. Won't the I? butt flap no, may help. <laughs> it's actually open. I couldn't figure out how to close it. I'm sitting kind of bare butt oh, on this it chair. Is. We're gonna it get happens chairs. to the best of us, Dan. <laughs> yeah. It certain sure does. So, Joanna, you're in your final uh, year of college right now, right? Yes, pushing through. And studying? Sometimes. No, I mean studying <laughs> what? Oh, <laughs> performance studies. Cool. So what does that mm -hmm. entail for you? Uh, so basically, in um, in my college, the only kind of arts program that they offer is the one that takes an in-depth look at every aspect of theater. So I take classes on how to write a script, and I take classes on how to direct. I take acting classes. I've taken costume uh, designing classes. I've taken makeup classes. Any class you could think of, <laughs> I have taken. So that's pretty much what my degree is. That's that amazing. Sounds like a dream, honestly. Yeah, it's so awesome. Or my nightmare. Yeah. Haven't decided. Yeah, well, it depends <laughs> right? on how close you are to it. <laughs> yeah. And you directed your first show. I'm so proud of you. This is one of my favorite things. When people come to Spring Theater and then they go off and they direct, <laughs> it makes me so happy. So these are some pictures from the show. Tell us about it. Okay, so um, for my class, we have to, um, we do everything. So I, do, I design the costumes. I design the makeup. I wrote the script. Oh so my god! If no you've read the Thumbelina book, she doesn't say much. Mm -mm. None of them say much. So I sat down at a desk for seven hours, and I wrote a ten-page script because Thumbelina is a part of a bigger show. So it was tell me a classical tale, and so mine was about a fifteen-minute insert in the middle of the show. That's amazing. No way. Do you remember the Hans Christian Andersen Thumbelina? Anybody yes. out there remember that? You mean the original? Isn't it, wouldn't that Thumbelina, be the original? Thumbelina, tiny little thing. Well, it was the original movie. Oh, I'm sorry. Hans Christian Andersen so definitely sorry. did not write music into his books. But there was a musical called Thumbelina, and it was with <clears throat> Danny, uh, not Danny, who's the one that played opposite um, a Gene Kelly in Singing in the Rain? Willem Dafoe. Oh, 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 oh. Um, somebody help me out. Come uh, on. Oh, Donald I know it. Connor. I know it. I know it. I know it. I know it. Donald I'm going to say Gene Wilder, but that's not right. No, but I would kill to see Gene Wilder oh, play Thumbelina. So cool. <laughs> it was it was Donald O'Connor. That's who it was. And he and he danced with Thumbelina. And 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 back then, if you think about back then, like the what they had to do to get a little dancing woman on his hand. So much. <laughs> so yeah, much. you can't do that anymore either. You oh, get... <laughs> it was just as hard on a stage a class to make her look four inches high and make everyone look not four inches high did you just <laughs> build two sets and and hers was like way way behind and everyone always just left a gap between her and the audience so people were like oh <laughs> thumbelina but she was actually like 40 feet behind them that's funny in a, in a way i did a lot of forced perspective so cool. like when she when she came in i would have her up on that on the staircase and then her mother would be like down on uh, center stage and the mother would be talking to her like on a table or in her hand, but she would be talking behind her. That's how they filmed Elf, yeah. by the way. What? They didn't use any special effects. Yep. I mean, it was special effects, but it wasn't like CG. They were all practical. Yeah. So cool. That's so exciting. Yeah. I feel you so probably famous now. Watching the, some of the behind the scenes stuff for Elf now that you've done that, because it's probably a lot of the same mind bending that, that they had to do. <sighs> so it true. It was crazy because we were working with a very small stage and so it was like, where do I put you? You're too big. <laughs> I admire your uh, your your gusto to go for a show for your first adaptation and directing to do a show where you have to put, make a person very tiny. I probably would have been like, we're gonna do, I don't know, Charlie Brown or... <laughs> <laughs> I had some help from my instructors though. So that was helpful because there were some points where I was looking at my actors and I was like, I'm a student just like you <laughs> and i don't know what's happening but y'all look but everybody great. starts out a newbie and now you're not anymore yeah no nope. this is actually my second show because i co-directed three musketeers last semester but this was my first solo run and i was like this is a lot 
Yeah, <laughs> and it's kind of terrifying to be to have everyone look at you like, uh, uh, what should I do now? I don't know if you know this, Joanna, but when I hired Dan, I hired him to um, do letters from home with me, mm -hmm. and he was so impressive, and I was like, hmm, why don't you come and co-direct Newsies at Spring mm -hmm. Theater, and mm -hmm. then we can do that during the day, and then in the <clears> evening, we can do our letters from home rehearsals. And Dan was a phenomenal director from day Thank one. Thank you, Ian. All was well. <laughs> <laughs> and literally on opening night, I turned to him and I was like, my gosh, you are literally one of the best directors we've ever had. You're incredible. Thank you so much for all and your I work. says that does not speak well to your brand. <laughs> <laughs> but then he said, well, I have to tell you something then. I have never directed before. And I was like, oh my gosh, I can't believe that. But uh, I never asked. I just assumed. <laughs> there's a lesson in there somewhere. So there's a first time for everything. And I'm proud of you. Thank you. I'm proud of me too. But I'm more proud that it's over. <laughs> yeah. I got my grade. Woo, and it was? It was a B. And I will take a B because a B is great. B, Can I tell B you? stands for best, I think. It does. Exactly. That's what it my does. mommy always said. Yeah. <laughs> B also stands for stinger. What? I don't know. I was just trying to make a B joke, but well, it wasn't. I love it. <laughs> okay, Joanna and audience at large, we would love to play a game with all of oh, you. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Right. Oh, I like games. This is a brand new game. We've never played it before. We don't even have an intro slide for no. it yet. So we're going to do it. It is called the alphabet game, game, game. I think it should be called alpha status. Alpha status. Okay. Right. I like it. Okay. I like it. I approve. How we play. Audience, you are going to give us a category. And then um, myself, Joanna, and Dan will take turns saying things in that category. So it has to begin with the letter of the alphabet. So if I start, it's A, and then Joanna would be B, Dan would be C, D, E, and, and we just keep going and going now. Within Beautiful. that category that you gave us. Exactly. We cannot help each other. However, it is a team that is supposed to win. So we're going to see if we can make it all the we way to do with something. Audience, if you have any suggestions of categories, just throw them out now in the comments. Even if they're ridiculous, we'll do our best. And what is it, a five second timer or something like that? Yep, so we have to do it in five seconds. And if we uh, if we miss, then boom, we're done. We're zip, zap, zopped out. Feels like this is gonna be, feel like something that's gonna, gonna seem easy and then we're gonna get. I feel like I'm in a battle. Yeah, right? I'm you ready. Are. This is war. This is intense. But it is. All right, we're gonna start. We lots of comments Who's coming starting in. this first one? Um. Uh, let's let Joanna start. Since I, she's oh, our lovely. Fan. Love it. <laughs> so get ready. Wait, how long has Beethoven playing on my phone in the background? Oh my gosh, I thought I heard something <laughs> and I was literally going on my own computer while you were talking. It's been a while. I'm going to get sued by we were the state oh, of Beethoven. It's like, Dude. we did not give you the permission to say, <laughs> to play piano sonata number eight in E flat major. Thank God it's not Garth Brooks week or we'd be out of here. Oh, there it is again. <laughs> we would. We they would have shut us down already. All right, All right Joanna. We have so many great <laughs> suggestions. So Joanna, with the letter A, Okay. We're gonna name. Uh, we're gonna start with. Uh, let's see. Ooh, we got so many. We have so many. Good job, commenters. Why won't it? It, stop, it won't stop. It won't stop. Well, it won't just, stop. Maybe we love phone. good audience yeah, participation. Timer. All right. <laughs> Woo! All right. We're gonna start with the category and with a letter A. We're gonna start with um, animals. All right. Oh, okay. Ant. Is that an animal? Mm -hmm. All right, Me? Dan. Beaver. A C would be a cat. Yes. Dog. Elephant. F would be a a f a f a, a furry. Ooh, a furry yeah. animal. I don't know a if furry. that means what you think it means. <laughs> a baby furry animal. Oh man, I can't believe I lost wow. us on animals. That's probably as easy as it's going to get to. That's oh, okay, though. No, that's okay. Oh, no. We're going to see how far we can get. I'm sorry, team. Joanna, I let you down. Thank you for being the anchor. Yes. Oh, of this I don't know team. What we do with it. I'll get us right. to the end, guys. Yep. Woo. All right, Dan, you start this one. Okay. And we're going to do, we'll start with fruit. And I'll start with A, apple. B, banana. Cantaloupe. Yes. <laughs> D, uh, durian. E, Eggplant fruit. I, I do think that that is technically a fruit. <laughs> it is. 
It is. is it? I, just, I think so. I, because I've been doing my year of ne- learning. Okay, sidebar, I think we call like half of the things we think are vegetables are actually technically from oh, bottom and fruits. Also, Bruce is asking, what's wrong with Garth? Absolutely nothing's wrong with Garth. But if you're live streaming and you play Garth Brooks music, his people will find you and shut you down unless they you They will take you down like Liam Neeson. Okay, he's not even on Spotify, dog. <laughs> like Liam you know. Neeson. They will take you out. They will find you. Yeah. But I they, got a very specific set of skills. Exactly. That was I a love terrible him. Garth Brooks impression. <laughs> I heard it. Okay, Joanna F. F. Fig. Ooh, good. A G. Um. Uh. Oh, God. Is there one? Is there one? Here's what I'm thinking. Maybe we should tackle this together and we can help each other That's out. That's what we should do. I like okay. that. Let's That's do it. That's what we should do. Okay. That's what we should so. do. An audience, feel free to help us too, even though with the lag, there's no way you're going to let us know in five seconds, but, nah, but, but you, you can try. You'll, it'll oh, be good. duh. What? A grape. Yeah, what? I thought about it as soon as it <laughs> stopped. Well, yeah, but I didn't grow up here. Uh, uh, there's there's grapes everywhere. That's re- that's a really privileged thing to say. I mean, maybe. Oh, yeah, tell it her, is. Tell her, Joanna. It, it it's is. It's a first world kind yeah. of thing to say. <laughs> yeah, that's really rude. All right, we're going to see if we can make it all the way to Z with each other's help. I will start Beautiful. this round. All right, we're going to go with, uh, keep the suggestions coming on in here, guys. We got lots of good um, Okay, we got, um, here's one that seems like it'll be good. And we're starting with who? Oh, everybody. Okay, rock, rock and, roll and roll hits. Hits, okay. Oh, Lord. Um, do they mean songs uh, or bands? Oh, Aerosmith. Well, yeah, no, I, I, think, it's, I think it's songs, all right. Let's, oh. let's do songs and bands. How about bands? All right. Let's, songs, it, songs or bands? We'll make or just, the decision as a team. It'll be rock and roll. We'll uh, make the decision as a team. Aerosmith works. What's songs, B? band, or words. B is Bono. Yes. Okay. Yes. C is the Carpenters. Yeah. Are we, are okay. We, are we not? I like that one. Let's do that one. Okay. Thank you, Joanna. D. They, they, they rip. Yeah, they do. D is uh, Def Leppard. Good job. <gasps> Good one. E. e. It, Earth, Wind, and Fire? Is that oh, a great yeah. one, Joanna? That just came in my brain, so I said it. <laughs> F is... Freddie Mercury. Freddie Mercury, oh, good one. yes. G. Godsmack. Yes. Is that real? Yes. The Grateful Dead. Oh, Grateful Dead, I like that. H. Hell something. Oh my goodness, um, you did can we do not. A, can we do a song? Yeah. I think it's supposed Highway to be to hell. Oh, even better. Double In H. fact, we're only doing songs now because Karina sugge- wanted rock and roll hits. And now we're like, how about this? How about so this true. funk band? All right. We can do rock and roll. <laughs> H. Yeah. Okay. So I, what's the I one? I, I, um, I, I, I want to rock and roll all night. Oh, yes. Every day. Yes. J. Jump. Van Halen. Nice. Nice. Okay. K. K. Oh, no. Hey, don't let it go. Hold on. Hold. hold. Everyone come stay calm. Come on, come on, come on, come on, I think that's a C. Wait, that is no, a C. Karma, no, it's Karma Chameleon. Yay! Hey, yes, it is. Oliver, that yes, was like Dan. 15. No. Oh, oh man. <laughs> Joanne, I appreciate your enthusiasm for victory. <laughs> I'm here. I'm ready. <laughs> it's needed. All right. I'm a competitive person. That was Me a too. good category, but it was a, it was hard. Yeah. Okay. So, it's the well, farthest thinking, we've gotten, though. Okay, then let me try to find something a little bit easier. Um, we can do this. Since that one was too hard, we're going to do... Here you go. Wait, tooth? Toothpaste? Toothpaste. I can you. name exactly one. How about this? Butterfly? I can also this? name exactly one. Oh, brands of water. Aquafina. Yeah. Bubbly. Okay, C. Crystal. River. Crystal Light. Crystal Light. Dasani. Dasani. Yes. Yeah, Aaron. Me and you. I know, right? E. 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 Uh, Everclear if you're really, really, really Irish. Yeah, Everclear. Uh, uh, F is Fiji. Fiji, yes. yes. G is... uh... (laughs) That works. Uh, H. Hello, my water. Hello, my darling. Hello, my ragtime gal. That's close Give enough me for me. Yes, by wire. Baby, my heart on fire. We are doing terribly, but we're this doing, is a hard game. you know, we're doing urine town this summer. 
and Joanna is going to be in it. Oh, yes, yeah, that's what I thought you meant when you said Everclear. Joanna, do you know the show you're in town? I will. You need okay, to you're gonna it love it soon. You're gonna I'm going to look it up. I'm looking it up this week. There's so many good parts for you in that show. I, yeah. I'm so excited. Oh. I'm so excited. I need to be on the stage. I just spilled water all over myself. She does this when she's excited. In honor of our Me water too. thing. Mm. All right, you guys. We are not ending this show until we make it to Z. I don't think that's true. All right. We're we... going to try. Well, let's say we're going to try one more time. That's... and We'll see okay. if we can make it. Okay, we'll try this one. It. All right. Musicals. All Any, right. Anything goes. That's a that's a better one. Mm -hmm. B is Bat Boy. Mm -hmm. C, Cats. Yes. Z, D. Dear Evan Hansen. Oh my goodness. E, Dear Evan Hansen. Don't do that. Don't do that. Don't don't sully the sanctity of the game. F. Wait. What? Oh. Okay. Then E is what? Um. Oh my word. Oh my goodness. Dear Evan Hansen. Yes. <laughs> yes. Um, I agree. F is Fun Home. G. Every musical is... I've ever seen. Out God of my Spell. Brain. God Spell. Yes. H is <sighs> a Hades Town. Oh, come on. We're so much better at this than me. No, no, no. You're, you're going to come in clutch when, when we need it. I is. Um, in the Heights. Good job. Good job, Dan. Well, I'm, I'm connecting with my roots. <laughs> Jesus Christ Superstar. K. Yes. Every single musical I've ever Ooh. seen. Oh, good one. L is. Look, look, look. Wait, look, 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 look. La La Land. Look. Counts. That yep. counts. Counts. That, counts. that is a musical. musical. That is a musical. Yes. L M. Is Mama Mia. Mama Mia, yeah. double one. N is n oh, the notebook. Good one. Is that a musical? It oh, is. Yes. It's on Broadway now. And I, I haven't seen what? it. My friend did the wig, some of the wig design and assistant choreo for that. It's going to be so the good. The things you learn on Dan and Aaron. I, I'm saying. Live. Oh, oh <laughs> thank you N, for the proper N name. N is also my favorite musical, Newsies. Good job, Sarah Wall. Uh -huh. um, o is. Um, oh, brother, where art thou? Good job. P, Pippin. Yes. I was gonna say Phantom of the Opera. Q. Q. Um. Uh. The look of fear. There's definitely a Q. There's definitely a Q. Um, there are sound cues in musicals. There are sound cues in musicals. Q. 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 Oh no, we can't lose. No, we won't. Q. Audience, we got it. We got Q. it. Q Come is, on, audience. Um. I quick, bet there's is a, there like a quick, quick, quick. I bet there's a musical called Quilters. Oh, there is. I've done it. I'm Ow, not even kidding. What? Quilters is a wonderful musical. We got I've it. done it. I've stage managed it. Okay. Oh, cool. This is also a good. R. Oh, yeah. R, R is. I, I know one, but it's not the first word. What is it? Singing in the rain. That works. Well, if you were in a library and you wanted it, you'd go for rain, rain comma, comma, singing, singing in, in the. the Yes, we so, are in the library, guys. S is um, SpongeBob. Yes. Yes. Here I am. I'm back. T. T. Um. Uh, the rain, comma singing in. Yes. Yes. <laughs> you, you're in town. Yes. Yes. Which is the only reason we chose this game. <laughs> v. v. Velma and Louise. <laughs> Velma and Roxy. V, 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 voom, voom, the uh, musical. Uh, <laughs> Sounds like my kind of musical. Oh, Victoria. that's such a good one. Ian, thank oh, you yeah. so much. Such a good thank one. Thank you, Ian. He is Victor Victoria. Uh, let's see, what comes after V? T U V W. When, when pigs fly. Wait, wait good one. Or Wicked, because I love Yeah, it. I was going to say Wicked. That's a better one. We'll go with Wicked. W, yeah. okay, X. Oh my gosh, X, Xanadu. Oh, does Xanadu. Yeah. Why? Dan Yes, Virginia, there is a musical theater number. Yes, Virginia, there is a Santa Claus is a musical. I have seen it. Really? 100%. Really? Seen the play. Yes. We are I've such a good team. Musical. I've seen the musical and it's better than the play. And Z is Z. Z. We are going to do this, ladies and gentlemen. All I can think of is Zootopia, but that's a Disney movie. 
It's yeah. a musical oh, no, Disney. It's not. No, it's not. Movie. I was no, thinking of Madagascar. Z is Z is. Ooh, that's another good Y one. Whatever. Okay, Z. we need a Z, Z or we can't end Z. this show. Z, Z. Oh, is is Zeus the musical a thing? I thought of that, but I don't. Seems hmm. like some religious organization should, would do that. I our, should know. This, yeah, the coalition of, of Greek know. mythicals. You should know. I should know. You want to use <gasps> Zorro? Is that a? Is oh, it? Xanadu's with an X, unfortunately. I'm going to say... Is Zorro <laughs> I like this one, Xana don't. There has to be a musical beginning with the letter Z. Is Somebody. it actually Zorro? Two people so said many Zorro. people are saying Zorro. I feel we should listen to the people. I feel yeah. we should listen to the people. You know, but I love... But those two people, Joanna, are very untrustworthy. No, but this there's, is... there's more. <gasps> oh, that... Zigfeld both at the Follies. same time. Good yes. job. Yes. Zigfeld Follies. Oh, which everybody. We did it. We made it all the way A to Z. Yes, Yay. we did. I'm so proud of us. Joanna, we love you so much. And on the way out today, I want you to give some great advice and loving words to our audience at large. Okay. The best inspirational thing I can give you at this moment is uh, something I actually told my friend not a few days ago. That um, no matter what hard time you may be in right now, the, the struggles that you're going through right now are nowhere as big as the beautiful big picture that is your life. Mm. Oh, I love that. Don't lose the forest for the trees. Amen. I love it. Oh, and we love you so much, Joanna. I we love y'all. Soon, cannot wait to see you this summer. I'm and, so um, excited. Look what just happened. Love. You spread heart all the over hearts. the seeds. I know. <laughs> Woo! Woo! Hi, right, Joanna. We'll see Thanks you next for making time. time. Love you anytime. Bye. Yeah. Love you. See you in a couple yeah. weeks, a month, or whenever it is. A few weeks. Okay. It's gonna be good. Love you. Oh, we've had so much fun hanging out with you all tonight. Thank you so much for being here. We have had such a good time. Uh, I want to share one more thing with you. What do you want to share? Well, it's uh, it's it's a segment, actually. Okay. Um, that I have been uh, hoping to share with you all day. Because as you with know... With me? Uh, well, with, with everybody. Oh. As you know, I love positive energy. I love positive things. And that's why we created a little something we call... Dan, I couldn't hold it. Aaron's Positivity Corner, and this week it is on how to be positive without the rainbows and the unicorns. Ooh, how very relatable. So what this means is I find that I see rainbows and unicorns a lot more than everyone else. I grew up just with this very positive mindset, but a lot of people don't. And so one of the things that I think is important is this thing that I heard where it is instead of taking a phrase, you can always rewrite it in your own way. Meaning instead of today, today is not a good day. You say today is a good day too, and then fill in the blank. So for instance, you could be like, oh, today is gonna be miserable or today is a good day to stay in bed and catch up on my rest. I love that. Today is a good day. I don't wanna be out with people. Today is a good day to recharge or today I, I'm lonely today. Today is a good day to go find some company. I so. like that. I don't want to do any more work tonight. So today's a good day to not do anything. <laughs> I else. think that's totally fine and fair. <laughs> what are some things that y'all do out there to make yourself happy? What's it? What's it, what? What made today great for you? I'll that's tell you what, what I want to know. We uh, had a big full day. We got the topper put on our new truck so <gasps> that we could did. put our letters from home equipment in there, and now it's out of our living room <laughs> and where it belongs, and we can travel with it again. What else did we do? We I went to Winnie the Pooh and mm -hmm. hung out with my sweet, sweet babies there. I had a, at a I ate at a Mexican restaurant I'd never seen before, and they only spoke Spanish, and I carried on my entire conversation in Spanish. Of course, my conversation was like, agua and si. <laughs> but still. But still, it, it works out well. It doesn't have to be a great day. It just has to be a day that made you a little bit better. That Ooh. you make a little bit better. Oh, or, yep, or that makes you better, too, if you think about it. Yeah. Because you know what's great? is the good days are fun and the bad days we learn from and we grow. I have a, a friend who's a big fan of stoicism, which I am too, um, but he always, he, he brought this phrase in my life that says, this thing isn't happening to me, it's, it's happening, happening for, for me. me. 
which mm -hmm. I love it because it's what it is, is something comes to you and it teaches you how to overcome that struggle. And that thing is removed from your path forever because you know how to deal with those things. You grow from everything in life. So, so you guys grow this week, enjoy your incredible week and we can't wait to see you next week right here on Aaron and Dan but it's live we actually have an amazing guest coming his name is Steve he's from New Jersey and he is one of the smartest theater people I've ever met if you're in a musical theater or theater in general this man will put you to shame because he's brilliant and kind and he's going we're going to put him through the ringer I think we're going to try to create the hardest trivia we possibly can for him absolutely to just see what we can do and I think he's going to tell us what we don't know <laughs> We love you guys, and we will see you next week on Aaron and Dan, but it's live. Until then, be kind and enjoy every moment. Bye.